I thought that the um, I thought that the internet would make the world more connected, more tolerant, more educated, and more true, like more agreed upon the facts and the way things are. And for a while, I think there were signs that this was happening. Okay, now here's the problem. What I didn't think about was that other communities can form. Communities where people have particular agendas, ideological or religious, or you know, people with extreme biases. Normally, they're not much of a force to reckon with because they are dilute in our populations. But on the internet, just like the people who love physics, people who hate science or uh, people with, with differing ideologies and people who are intolerant can find each other and they can come together into these camps. So I think that starts to suggest why we have the problem that we have today. And then what do people do once they've found their communities, once they've found their people? Well, we have meetups, but we also, we share things with each other online. And what you have, in essence, is kind of evolution taking place, an evolution of ideas on the internet. And so I guess what I mean is, you know, one person can post this picture of a cat and then people can vary the phrases that are on it and the, the best phrase is going to win out and get itself replicated and shared across the web more than any other. And the same thing happens with ideological arguments, right? If, if there's some sort of debate that's happening on the internet, different versions of arguments can pop up. And when you think about two groups on the internet debating, they're not really debating each other. Each community creates what they think the opponent's argument is. And then people within that community can tweak that argument to make it worse and worse and worse, to make it the, the most awful version of itself that pushes our buttons. And when it pushes our buttons, then we share it with everyone we know. And we say, look at what the other side is talking about. Look at how, how awful it is. And, and we keep evolving the ideas to make them really, really bad. Those are the ones that, that get shared and spread just like in evolution. We are evolving arguments to make them the worst form of themselves. And then to make the, the pushback, you know, even worse. And that, I think, is leading to this polarization. And what's worse the internet is organized by algorithms. Algorithms that are designed to take the things that are most engaged with, most, that, that most push our buttons, that get us going and get us sharing and liking or hating, and they promote those even further. And this, I think, is where something like fake news comes in. How is it possible that during the last election cycle in the US, more fake news was spread and shared than real news. That is extraordinary. And I think it happens because the internet allows groups of people to come together who have really particular views. It allows them to share things with each other, even sharing what they think the opponent's argument is, tweaking it ever so slightly, doing all of these little mutations, little alterations, and finding the ones that push our buttons the most. And then those are the ones that get shared. Those are the ones that get liked and hated and everything. And those are the ones the algorithm elevates to the very top. So rather, the, rather than the internet bringing us together, rather than us converging around the facts, instead, the internet allows us to divide ourselves into factions and to have this crazy evolution of arguments, which is facilitated by the algorithms, pushing us ever further apart. And that is the, the, the best that I've been able to reason about why we now care less about facts than we ever did before.